All right, it's finally the day. The much requested how-to build of the DIY EMP made from a Harbor Freight fly swatter. So this is the one I showed you in the video. We're gonna take it a little ways from my phone here. Make sure I don't hurt my phone. But we're gonna go ahead and turn this fly swatter into one of these. I'm gonna show you how. Uh, just be aware that you could get shocked. You could damage electronics. Don't damage other people's stuff. Don't damage your stuff and don't blame me. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take apart this fly swatter. So it's got some number one Phillips. They're kind of deep holes, so you'll definitely want a screwdriver with kind of a long shank. The multi-bit kind probably won't work for all these screws. There are several different models of this fly swatter, so some things may vary slightly like the battery doors and my little 3D printed part may not fit all the models. You can do it without this part. You'll just need something circular or you can be really good at wrapping the wires, but you just need to get the coil to be about two inch diameter, two or three wraps. All right, so then we're just gonna take this little, this screw the rest of the way out, because apparently I didn't get it all the way out. And we're gonna pull this apart just like so this screws a little stuck all right now on some models there's a little separate plastic piece that goes on this button make sure not to lose that and this simple little board is all there is to it so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and chop these wires off this is what connects the board to the fly swatter head, and we can get rid of that. Now, some of these have different sized pieces here. Of the two kinds I've come across, the part fits perfectly on the other one. This model, I had to widen the holes just a little bit to get to slide on there. But this piece just pushes on like that. And then all we have to do is solder the wire and make a coil. So for that, we're gonna use some heavier gauge wire. This 20 gauge wire is probably the minimum I would use. I'd actually recommend probably 12, 14, but this is what I have and I think it'll work just fine. So we're gonna pull a decent amount out. We'll probably have to trim it back, but that's better than being too short. Now this project does require just a little bit of soldering but it's super easy soldering, so don't be afraid to try it. I'm just gonna strip the end of that real quick. And then we're gonna take our soldering iron and we're just gonna go down here and unsolder these wires that used to go to the head of the, ra of the racket or bug zapper. Now you could just try to attach these wires to your coil but the best thing to do is replace them. Try to get make myself a little spot to make this work here. And we're just going to heat this solder up while we pull on the wire. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. And if you look at these pads, you can see they're pretty big traces and all those are connected together. So as long as you solder to something in there, you're good to go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to solder one end of the wire to the first side. It actually doesn't matter which side you go with. I was gonna put it back on the pad it came off of. It doesn't really matter. You can see these are stuck together. So it's just kind of whatever. I'm just gonna put a little extra dab of solder there. And we're gonna get some on the tip and then we're just gonna solder this end of the wire right there. Maybe get a little bit more solder on there. Not the prettiest joint, but it doesn't matter. All right, and now you can see this little printed part has these little uh, valleys or little or, or I don't know what you call them, a little way for the wire to go through. 
And since this wire is a little thinner, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it. Uh, actually, no, we'll just go ahead and do two. Two should be plenty. And we're gonna tuck it back in here. Now, the other thing I recommend for this is a hot glue gun. You can do it with any kind of glue, but hot glue makes it easier. So I'm just gonna glue this wire into that channel to make sure it doesn't come loose. Let that cool. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side over here. Just glue the wire in place so it doesn't come out. Not like that, we don't want that. And I'm also gonna go ahead and add a couple of zip ties as I burn myself with the hot glue. A couple zip ties here. Clamp my hot glue mess a little bit. You could also just glue this wire in place if you don't have zip ties. It doesn't really matter, we're just getting it to stay. We want it to stay in that circular shape. Now, I'm no scientist. I don't know if this is the optimum number of coil wraps or the optimum size of coil, but it works for me. I'll just go ahead and trim these. Nice and flush so I don't cut myself. And of course the glue escaped my hot, or the wire escaped my hot glue. So we'll just add a little bit more there and a little bit down here to keep it in the channel. And we'll go ahead and do the same over here. Just to keep it in the channel. All right, we'll let that glue set for just a few minutes or just a few seconds here. And the next thing we're gonna do is we need to actually glue this wire close to those pads, but it can't be touching them because we need to create a spark gap. And that's where the little bit of finickiness and the hot glue is kind of nice because it allows you to tweak the positioning a little bit so that you can get it just right so that you get the maximum voltage um, but it's still able to spark. And that's still hot. Wow. Okay, so we're just going to trim this wire so that it just about touches that pad. And we're going to strip the end of it just a little bit. Wrap those so they don't hopefully come, they don't get frayed. Now this is the tricky part. We need to basically get this wire to almost touch this solder pad, but not quite. So what I like to do is I actually like to glue it so that it's touching and then bend it away slightly. But you don't want to get any glue between the solder pad and the wire. So we're going to go ahead and glue this wire right to the circuit board, making sure that we don't get any hot glue between the wire and the solder pad. And right now it's touching, but we're gonna pry that apart just a little bit once that glue sets. And that's gonna create a spark gap, which allows the power to build up in the capacitor and create the pulses we need to generate the electromagnetic pulse. And actually it's probably too far away right now, but we'll just bend it down. We're just gonna let that glue set so that it holds it in place. Like I said, hopefully let the glue set. Just kind of squish the glue onto the board a little bit. And then we'll bend that wire real close to that pad. Now, if you've had batteries in this thing recently, you may want to stick a screwdriver or something across that gap so you don't get shocked. I got a little bit of glue on top of the wire, but as long as there's no glue between it and the pad, we should be fine. I'm gonna put just a little bit more because it's not sticking super well. And I don't want it to move around. So again, we'll just let that glue cool off a little bit. You know you have this gap right when you put the batteries in, press the button, and you get a repeated arcing. If you don't get an arc, you're either too far away or you're too close. 
you don't want it touching. And if it's too far away, this little tiny board can't generate enough voltage to jump the gap. So we want it just right. So here, as soon as that glue sets just a little bit more, we're gonna go ahead and put batteries in here and try not to shock ourselves and try to adjust the gap. So give me just a second to let that glue set. All right, so make sure you use decent D-cell batteries for this. The Harbor Freight ones work okay, but they don't seem to last very long. So I recommend getting some like decent name brand batteries. So we're gonna test this and let me look at this real close. I can't quite see it in the camera. I think it might be touching. Uh, maybe, let's see. So let's press the button here. Oh, and you see a little zap and then doesn't do anything else. That means it's touching. We don't want that. So we're gonna take the screwdriver so we don't get electrocuted. And we're gonna just not touch the metal part of the screwdriver. And we're gonna push the wires just a little bit away from the pad. Let's see if we can get to focus here. And that's probably too far, so let's get just a little closer. So you want them probably just like a paper's width away. Now, once you short this out, you can touch it with your fingers and it won't shock you. But if you don't short it out with something metal, it will shock you. All right, let's check that. So you can hear it charging, but it's not, it's not arcing. So we're too far away. So if I do this, See, you don't want to get shocked by that. So get just a little closer. Take a closer look. I can't quite see through the camera. All right, so I tweaked this a little bit more. We're gonna hold it again away from my phone. But, so you want a pretty regular arc like that just to make sure it's gonna go ahead and work. Uh, if it's too far apart, it may never arc. Um, and if it, doesn't arc at all, it's either too far away or it's touching. So you don't want either of those. You want a continuous little pop, pop, pop. All right, so all we're gonna do is put the case back on and it's done. Okay, so we've got it back together. I'm holding it sideways, which should be the least amount of power and away from my phone. You can hear the arcing, that means it's working. So there is a couple different models of these. The original one is the 62577, see if I can get to focus there. This new one I got is a 63681. As you can see, my 3D printed part fits a lot better in this older model. Um, so if you have the newer model or a different model other than the 62577, you may have to enlarge the holes in the print or possibly adapt it further, but the link for that part is in the description. Um, you can also just use anything that's cylindrical, ideally probably something plastic, non-conductive, and that's about it. All right, guys, thanks.